Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, we're in the sports section. Look us up. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I'm back to using headphones for this video. For some reason, I'm having audio problems. Hopefully, this will be a step in the right direction uh, toward greater clarity and less distortion. Right now, Johnny Gonzalez, a 5.25 to 1 underdog, took on the fighter that Showtime, a CBS subsidiary, had as the fifth best fighter pound for pound in the sport, Abner Maris. Right? Now, if you don't believe that styles make fights, I hope you tape that fight and consider it exhibit number one. Right? Johnny Gonzalez, again, a 5.25 to 1 underdog, delivered emphatically by first round knockout in a carefully thought out execution of Abner Maris. Right? Let's talk about it. Your bank account, your gambling account, should have. A lot more units in it today as a result of that victory. Right now, let's just think this through a little bit. As I said in the pre fight uh, video, both Gonzalez and Abner Maris used to be trained by Nacho Beristain. Gonzalez is still with Beristain. Abner Maris moved on to other pastures. Now, given that Gonzalez is 31 years old and still has a lot left in the tank, one should have made a careful note of the fact that Beristain, before the fight, said that he thought Gonzalez was going to win by knockout. He used to train Abner Maris. He saw the holes in Abner Maris's game. Gonzalez at 31 would have had his career set back probably 18 months or more had he lost this fight, right? Let's also realize that whatever is being said in the press, the best judges of these fighters are your own eyes. The guy with the better punch between these two was the 5.25 to 1 underdog Johnny Gonzalez. The guy who was the better technician between these two was the underdog Johnny Gonzalez. When you look through the history of who these guys have fought, and I understand, Abner Maris has fought Victor Arcinian, Camito Moreno, Joseph Agbeko, but understand Johnny Gonzalez went to Japan and fought Huzumi Hasegawa. Johnny Gonzalez had fought fighters like Israel Valdez, right? Between these two, Johnny Gonzalez, quite frankly, had fought the more meaningful opposition. And keep in mind, too, Johnny Gonzalez had been a champion. Also, Abner Maris had been playing musical chairs with weight classes and hadn't been at this weight class for a long time, right? And so sometimes Vegas gets it wrong. They got it wrong here. This fight should have been a toss-up. Instead, they gave you greater than 5 to 1 odds on the puncher and the technician. This was easy pickings. Let's talk about the actual mechanics of the fight. Understand, fighters come in with strategy, right? I know there are many of you who believe that another Nacho Beristain fighter, Juan Manuel Marquez, got lucky in scoring a one-punch knockout of Manny Pacquiao. But, as Marquez himself has said in interview after post-fight interview, they knew Manny Pacquiao would be open for the right counter. They knew it. And so, Marquez spent the whole fight setting it up. Understand that Beristain is a master chess player. His fighters come in with strategies. They're looking to land specific punches. Now Abner Maris is a guy who's a great athlete, but his fights are rough and tumble. You know a guy isn't 
an elite technician. When he's getting hit with the kitchen sink by the end of the third round in his fights, right? Technicians force you into slots, right? They force you to fight certain ways, right? Think about it. The word technician implies technique. They come in, they deny you the ability to brawl with them, right? They force you to do things like walk into the punches they want. Right now here, understand that Maris is not defensively gifted. He's not. Right? You know that just by looking at his face after fights, right? Often he's in brawls. Sometimes he has to do things like throw low punches against Joseph Agbeko in their first fight to buy time. So understand, Beristain and Gonzalez didn't want Maris to turn on his defense, to block the right side of his face. They didn't want Maris to raise his right hand to actually start being defensive. So what does Johnny Gonzalez do? And understand, Gonzalez has three big weapons, right? He fights a lot like Vladimir Klitschko. So he has a devastating straight right hand. He has an excellent jab. He has an excellent left hook. So, you knew something was up. Pauli Malinaji announcing the fight in real time knew something was up. When Johnny Gonzalez, who has an excellent jab, comes in and hardly throws it. Why did Gonzalez hardly throw his left jab? Because he didn't want Maris to start trying to block it, to actually be aware of this side of his face. He didn't want Maris's defense turned on. So Gonzalez is in there mixing it up with Maris, but he's not even using his weapons. Right? He barely touches Maris with his jab. He gives Maris the illusion that his jab isn't that powerful. His left hand isn't something Maris needs to worry about. So what happens? Maris doesn't even have a hand up drops his hand, forgets about Johnny Gonzalez's left hand. Then, of course, Johnny Gonzalez throws a left hook. It's one of the sport's best. It literally drops Abner Maris. That left hook takes his title. This fight is over after Maris hits the canvas the first time. He's badly hurt. When you're fighting a big puncher and you're badly hurt and you're not defensively gifted and there's too much time left not just in the fight but in the round, this fight is over. What I want you to do too is two things. When Maris gets back up and they continue fighting, I want you to look at that sequence of punches. Understand, Johnny Gonzalez is there with Abner Maris. You know, looks like he's trading. He's timing. He lands another picture book. Left hook. I'm just telling you, Johnny Gonzalez landing left hooks on the button against an opponent in the first round is no coincidence. That's an execution of strategy. Right? He lands another picture-perfect left hook. Right, That's the first thing I want you to look at. Right, Whatever else happens, you know, Gonzalez in there rolling with punches and throwing punches, understand he's setting up the left hook. Then what I want you to do is to look at Maris's feet. He gets hit so hard that one of his legs looks bent and out of position. It looks like he's about to fall on that leg. Literally have the leg collapse like a lawn chair. He's completely unprepared for it. He goes down hard. The referee did the right thing. Right? It's better to get knocked down twice and to live for another day than to have your career severely shortened by having the ref allow that fight to go on and then looking like Nathan cleverly did 
in the last round against Sergei Kovalov, right? As I said before, that fight should have been a pick em fight. It was not. The underdog delivered. You got back 5.25 to 1 on Johnny Gonzalez. Let's talk about another fight that I thought should have been a pick em fight. I thought Tony Thompson, a 3.25 to 1 underdog, had a shot, a real shot, against Kubrat Pulev. And it looked that way for three rounds. I gave Tony Thompson the first three rounds. But after those first three rounds, I'll tell you what, you'd be hard pressed to give Thompson two more rounds in that fight. He got dominated. He got dominated to such an extent that I was wondering whether the hedge of Thompson, you know, going the distance would hold. And let me just say, in my opinion, Thompson clearly made it the distance. Kubrat Pulev is gifted. The best part of his game are his legs. He can move, right? He moves very fast for a heavyweight. It's very hard to corner him. Right? He's that video game character who just moves better than everyone else. In the heavyweight division, right? I cannot think of a heavyweight who moves better than Kubrat Pulev. He has great legs. No question about it. He also can fight you from the outside in. In other words, he has an excellent jab. Right? It's very hard to catch up with him already because he moves quickly. As you try to catch up with him, he's peppering you with jabs. You're losing rounds. Right? It's very hard to fight at Kubrat Pulev's pace. A lot of men, Alexander Demetrenko, Ustinov, literally just folded up because they could not continue the pace as they came forward to try to find Kubrat Pulev. They were getting hit with crisp counters and after a while it does become death by a thousand cuts. Right? Now this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't talk about the downside of Kubrat Pulev. Right? First, Pulev needs to be the fighter closest to the middle of the ring. As I said, he fights you from the outside in. He doesn't have an inside game. There are times in this fight where Tony Thompson leans way back on the ropes, right? If he were fighting a guy with a big time inside game, if he were fighting, let's say, Bernard Hopkins, assuming the weights were pound for pound weights, right? Were standardized. A Hopkins would leap in wouldn't allow him to lean back forward after he leaned back like that on the ropes, right? A guy who could fight inside would literally come inside and put a forearm on Tony Thompson's chest, would bore hooks into Tony Thompson's exposed body, right? Would make a tired Tony Thompson even that much more tired, would not allow Tony Thompson to extend his arms. That's not Kubrat Pulev. What Pulev does, the best he can do, is when Tony Thompson's over on the side of the ring and he's leaning, you know, outside the ring and stuff like that, the best Pulev can do is come up, shoot a few jabs, and try to catch him with a right cross. That's the best he can do, right? He's not a guy who can come in on an angle and literally live inside. That's not him. I didn't see Kubrat Pulev shorten his punches, right? Also, Tony Thompson can lounge with his back against the ropes. Kubrat Pulev doesn't fight with his back against the ropes, right? I'm just saying elite fighters, uh, Vitaly Klitschko, who I think is a step up on his brother Vladimir, can literally hang out by the side of the ropes and let an active Derek Chisora throw himself out, right? Kubrat Pulev doesn't have that. He's a guy who needs space, needs to be in the middle of the ring, needs to have his jab popping. Another problem is simply the power problem. 
Vladimir Klitschko has a big punch. Vitaly Klitschko has a big punch. David Hay has a big punch. Right? These are the guys right now who are ruling the roost in the heavyweight division. Right? Alexander Povetkin doesn't have that big a punch, but he has very fast hands. Right? Well, understand Kubrat Pulev doesn't hit like a Klitschko or like David Hay. Right? He's deaf by a thousand cuts. The other guys have bigger margins of error. Right? They can make mistakes and come back with one punch. Kubrat Pulev can't. Right? It was perilous. And people need to understand the danger that Kubrat Pulev lost the first three rounds in this fight. Let's just do the math. Had he lost the fourth round, right? Understand, he would have had to have won four rounds in a row just to break even by the start of the ninth round, right? The fact that he won the fourth round only had him two rounds behind in the fight, right? That's a dangerous spot for a guy to be in, you know, down multiple rounds when you don't have the punch to win a lot of 10-8 rounds, right? You weren't watching a Kovalev or a Gennady Golovkin in this one. You were watching a guy who you understood. For him to win the fight, he would have to put together a few 10-9 rounds, right? The lack of power could become an issue as Pulev takes on the winner of Povetkin versus Vladimir Klitschko, right? Let me also say, too, that you need foot speed to keep up with Kubrat Pulev. You definitely do. But understand that at this rare air in the heavyweight division, guys have foot speed. David Hay can actually move around the ring when he wants to, right? Vitaly Klitschko might look stiff, but look at his feet. Look at the ground he covers. Let me also point out, too, that Adlanir Solis beat Kubrat Pulev multiple times when they were amateurs. Right? A fighter with foot speed. And I know it's hard to believe, but Kubrat Pulev, excuse me, Adlanir Solis has foot speed, who can hunt down. Kubrat Pulev, in my opinion, would have an advantage on him because Pulev isn't a guy who operates well when cornered, right? He's a major player in the heavyweight division. He has earned the mandatory challenger status to Vladimir Klitschko and Alexander Povetkin. I just wonder if he has the power and the back up against the ropes game and the offensive arsenal since I didn't see a lot of body shots here or short punches to cope at this level we'll find out in a few months let me hear from you leave your comments for me here online visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and on Roku at Dwyer Boxing and Sports News thanks for stopping by